The mere concept of taxes makes my blood run cold. It isn't a matter of irresponsibility, but perhaps immaturity. I'm simply not ready to let go of the wonderland that exists within a child's mind. Imaginations are as unique as the people maintaining them. I believe that imagination defines our individuality. For without them, we are left in a bleak, boring, sepia tone world. There is an unwavering disconnect between young child and young adult. Make believe becomes socially unacceptable when immaturity is reduced to naivety, triviality, and foolishness. Balancing all of these adjectives is a difficult job. Childhood is the perfect alibi. Through make believe games and a lack of self consciousness, children have the ability to paint their world with any color they please. I find that artists and children are very much alike. They are visually overwhelmed, gazing upon each atom with individualized care. Children surrender themselves to fantasy, and their lives are filled with unlimited adventure. As a child, I specialize in imagination. I once crafted a Jurassic narrative that was just too juicy to forget. So I grabbed a pencil and carefully sketched my dinosaurs onto the pristine white walls of our staircase. I was an artist. My parents didn't think so, but I did. <laughs> Pablo Picasso once said, every child is an artist. The problem is how to, make, how to remain an artist once we grow up. This quote carries a beautifully ironic message. It may seem that an artist of such stature carries pure, unregarded idealism. However, Picasso was a horrible person. He was egotistical, rude, and carried, cared nothing for his friends. Even those who seem to have an outworldly sense of joyousness live contradictory lives. Artists are stereotyped with lives of loneliness and sorrow. I believe that this depression, at least in Picasso's case, comes from the rejection of humble, childish joy. I constantly find myself falling into pits of stress and anguish. My distress usually derives from cynicism. I have always struggled with this balance, remaining inspired, and creativity is dried up by the social pressures of perfection. <coughs> Maturity should not be equated with perfection, for one is capable of one, no one is capable of achieving such a goal. If they were, life would no longer be engaging. Remember that bleak, boring, sepia tone world? That isn't a world I want to live in. We all have to mature, but in growing up, we shouldn't have to let go of our childhood enthusiasm. We shouldn't have to desert our quests for inquiry and exploration. This attitude of continuous wonder stems from my literary idol, Alice. Lewis Carroll's Alice's Adventures in Wonderland delineates the disconnect between child and adult. Alice isn't the ideal fantasy. A perfect young girl full of creative thought. Her time in Wonderland forces her through every child's greatest fear, growing up. Throughout the novel, Alice finds herself in a unique battle between progression and regression. She nibbles the pastries of Wonderland, transforming herself quickly <coughs> from as tall as a castle to as small as a blade of grass. But I see a deeper connection. Wonderland itself prompts Alice's progression towards adulthood and regression towards childhood. It is not until she faces the Queen of Hearts that Alice finally finds the right ratio of eat me cakes to drink me potions, the right ratio between maturity and immaturity. I can't help but assume that the Queen of Hearts is more than just an antagonist. Alice, for Alice, she is adulthood personified. Throughout the story, Alice avoids the influences of the Queen. She becomes afraid of what might happen to her if she does something wrong in the presence of the Queen. In the end, Alice re refuses to succumb to the Queen of Hearts' ridiculous rules. She rejects the tenets of adulthood and it instead replaces them with her own reasonable and imaginative decrees. However, Alice is a special case. As we mature, some of us adopt the role of the White Rabbit. The White Rabbit is obsessed with time. He is already late for his date with the Queen, his date with adulthood. He yearns for a solidified destination and ignores the journey. However, some of us prefer Alice's route. Alice runs from the queen, symbolizing her escape from adulthood. She embraces all that befalls her and finally returns to reality. Her escape into fantasy actually improves her quality of life. 
Alice breathes reality like an old friend, but she is never too quick to forget the influences of Wonderland. Carol writes, lastly, she pictured to herself how this same little sister of hers would, in the after times, be herself a grown woman, and how she would keep through all her riper years the simple and loving heart of her childhood, and how she would gather about her other little children and make their eyes bright and eager with many a strange tale, perhaps even the dreams of Wonderland of long ago, and how she would feel with all their simple sorrows and find a pleasure in all their simple joys, remembering her own child life and the happy summer days. Alice matures physically, yet she still remains faithful to her childhood wonder. She carries with her an unguarded satisfaction in the face of her real adulthood. She's excited to progress in her life, even imagining, even imagining having children of her own. Her happy summer days are not yet over. I believe that for Alice, adulthood is only an altered model of childhood. <coughs> Alice and I have spent many nights together, falling through Wonderland and recovering ourselves in reality. Together, we accepted our fates. No matter how hard I try, I am not going to stay young forever. I am growing older and gaining responsibilities that have no tolerance for make-believe. However, that does not mean that I am prepared to follow in the steps of the white rabbit. I refuse to regard adulthood with urgency. My journey has just begun, and my destination has no deadline. We can all still find wonder in the seemingly mundane, just like Alice. So I urge you all to take your childish joy as it comes, and never reject it for fear of immaturity. 